Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Unboxed. I'm your host, Rob Gagne with Boveda, and today we have the Cigar Medics Humidimeter. This thing is a godsend because it's allowing us to see what the relative humidity is inside our cigars. We know exactly what we're getting into before we even light them. So I can go ahead and push this into the cap of the cigar, turn it on. It's gonna light up for about 10 seconds and tell me right where this cigar is at whether I want to smoke it right now or not. This one's at 60%. I think I'm going to pass on this one, give it some more time to age in my humidor, and I'm going to go for one that might be a little bit longer uh, in my humidor and see what I get. I know this one's been sitting in there for a while, so I'm definitely going to try this one out. Give it a cut. Well, actually, we don't even need to cut it. We can just put it right in there. 71, 65, 64, perfect, 64 it is. That should be good enough for me. We'll see how it smokes. I do wanna bring in two of the founders. I got John and Lou on the other line. We're gonna get them into this conversation and see how this thing got invented, why it was invented, and what we need to know as consumers on how to use it. Welcome to an episode of Unboxed, everyone. John and Lou, thank you for joining us. What's going on, Rob? Thank you for having us, Rob. Yeah, man. I'm super excited about this because I've been using this product now for about nine months when you guys sent it to me, testing it out, seeing how I like it, seeing what it does for me as a cigar smoker. And I will tell you, I definitely think that this is a wise tool to have in my arsenal. I just think that when you get cigars, you don't always know what relative humidity they're at. And it's a little unfair to judge the cigar without giving it a good, uh, basically representation of what it should be smoked at. And I think anything above right around 65 to 69%, 70% is perfect for me for smoking a, a cigar. That's where I think the sweet spot is for me. How about you guys? I usually go around 62 to 66 at the foot. So that by the time I get to the final third of the cigar, it's closer to the 70 range. Because you're saying it kind of, it increases the humidity as you smoke it because it starts to warm up that cigar, starts to increase right. that. Okay. That's interesting. The heat, as you're smoking on a, the heat as you're smoking a cigar actually changes the state of the water inside the cigar. So the cigar actually becomes uh, more moist as you're smoking on it. That's what explains oftentimes when you feel behind an ember why it gets a little squishy and a little damp. It's actually the water turning to steam and softening the cigar a little bit. So like Johnny, I like to start mine at 62 to 66 on the foot. That's my perfect sweet spot. Interesting. I'll have to give that a try to see. I mean, obviously I just put down that dapper cigar because I thought it was uh, a little under humidified right now, but maybe it's going to be perfect. So I should have given it a shot. Well, you were, you were testing the cap, correct? Correct. I was testing the cap. So what do you guys see there so then? Most like 65%? Most likely at the foot, it was probably a little bit less. It'd be interesting to see if you check the foot on that one, what the readings would be on the foot. I should do it. We'll find out. That's why we have this thing. <laughs> it's the beauty of it. What do we got? Can't see it. I'll tell you here in a minute. Sixty-one percent. So that cigar is perfectly equalized. See, so you you see there's there's cases where the head and the foot are very similar. It's not always uh, the case where the head is always higher. I would say 90% of the time you see that, but the humidity in that cigar is perfectly equalized, albeit a little bit low, but I would light that one up. That's a good cigar to light up. Great. But knowing that knowing that it ramps up, Rob, because wait, wait till you get into you know the first 10 minutes, uh, you'll notice like right behind the ember, on all, any cigar you smoke, it gets a little soft, right? A little damp, a little squishy. And that's just because it actually, the heat that you're pulling through it actually changes the state of the moisture, you know? 
Right. So, Making that much more soft and more humid uh, inside right. that, inside the cigar. And that phenomenon, that phenomenon really happens on pretty, many, pretty much any cigar as long as it has moisture in it. That will happen, much like what happens when you're, when you're cooking meats on the grill. You see the water come out. Same thing happens with the cigar. But obviously you don't see it because it's all in filler, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I've done some testing on this, but before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about how did you even come to make this and what gives you the credentials to even come up with this thing? Because this has a lot of science behind it. It does, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by nature. I've been in business. Uh, I want to, I've owned a company for 35 years. And I'm actually an inventor. I actually have quite a few inventions out already. I'm the kind of guy who always, when I see a need for something, I always try to focus on it if I can do it, you know. So uh, uh, there was a period of time a couple of years ago where I kind of neglected a couple of my humidors. And, and uh, I knew they were dry, but I wasn't sure how long I should wait to smoke those cigars. I didn't know if they were completely... Uh, deprived of the oils, seemed like there was some humidity left in them. But how long do you wait? Right. So you know, I put a couple of seventy-two percent Boluda packs, but you know, you would feel them, smell them. But at the end of the day, how did you know how long to wait? So I said, let me look at maybe getting myself a uh, a moisture meter. You know, I mean, I've seen them used. Woodworkers use them. Building material, uh, building inspectors use them. Um, uh, it's a it's a meter, and in fact, uh, even when you go to like the uh, the Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards, you find these garden type moisture meters that you put in a pot, and it tells you if they're ten dollars. It tells you if you have enough moisture in the soil. I thought for sure, because of how finicky cigar smokers are, that we'd be able to find something. Well, you know, Google searching, I didn't find anything. The only thing I found was that there's a company in the East Coast that makes moisture testers. For tobacco, but not cigar tobacco. It's burly tobacco, which is tobacco that's used in cigarettes. It's not fermented tobacco. It's just sure. cured. So it's not calibrated. Not to mention that uh, it it uh, it was three thousand dollars. You know, Whoa. on top of that. Wow. And uh, right. And the other thing was that it gave me a moisture content reading. So. What does that mean to me? You know, cigar smokers know relative humidity. We don't know what the moisture content of a cigar is. Well, upon reviewing, you find out that a cigar that's at 70% relative humidity has about 15% moisture content in it. So I know that. So I got the, got the wheel spinning, and we came up with an idea to, you know, find a way to uh, make a meter that not just aficionados can use, but everyday smokers, you know, and that we wanted to make it affordable. And, you know, Rob, I smoke 500 cigars a year. So I'm sure in that time, even with a well-kept humidimeter or a, a well-kept humidor, some of those cigars were probably under or over humidified, not knowing uh, that, you know, that, you know, where they were at. So, Absolutely. I mean, the problem is, I think I've, I always had the misconception of, thinking that a cigar would acclimate within a few days or a week, right? Right. Because we're all used to putting a bottle of water in a refrigerator and knowing the next day it's cold. But with a cigar, you know, how long does it really take? You know, so that's that was the big mystery, and that's why we developed this meter. Yeah, one of the biggest things that we were surprised about is the length of time. It could take sometimes up to months, m multiple months, for your cigar to reach where you, where you want it to be. Absolutely, yeah. From and essentially, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I just need to second that. From our testing, we've done the exact same thing. And in airtight containers, it's right around anywhere from four to eight weeks to get fully distributed humidity to that cigar and make sure that it's, like you said, equilibrated to 69%. So, um, of course, if you put it in a wood humidor, then that can take even longer. Um, so yeah, I totally agree with you. It's very tough to know, is this cigar ready to smoke now? And also to elaborate on Lou's point, um, he talked a little bit about the moisture content and humidity. Um, basically the meter will read the moisture content in your cigar and then it will convert it to display relative humidity. So the percentage you see on your screen is going to be the uh, relative humidity of your cigar. Right. 
Perfect. So that's the that's the one area in the half wheel ad or the review was pretty much, hey, we, we don't know that conversion. We just are relying on your algorithm. How tight do you think your algorithm is on that? Uh, well, I, I spent months and tested literally thousands of cigars in controlled atmospheres, humidity, temperature, because I was not ready to launch this product unless I knew that it was correct. So we tested all different types of cigars that they told us manufacturer we didn't stick with just one cigar manufacturer and uh, and that's how we did it and and the, the ironic part is we never used Bovida <laughs> to do that I only brought in Bovida we merged them into our testing at the end just to confirm that sure. we were good you know because you know you're good on your product but we didn't want the results to be swayed by the numbers on your packet so at the end when I did uh, redundant testing we found that the Bovida came in right in line with the humidimeter and we were so elated about that so we knew that we were very close you know that's great so you're you're you had said earlier that this is about one to two percent accurate right uh we guarantee it to two plus or minus two percent accuracy Perfect. but again it depends on the role i mean it's it's not uh an instrument because again we're not dipping this into a mass or you know a, a something that Essentially, what's happening is it's checking the resistance between the two probes. So those two probes have to go through a series of leaves touching other leaves bunched together. So because of the nature of the substance and, and how it's in, 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 how it's in, interpolating that information, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close enough to give you a reading. That and we found it to be actually knowing that we we found it to be remarkably accurate. In fact. You can take the meter and just take a reading uh, and just spin it 90 degrees from the current, from the spot you just removed it, and it usually checks within one or two points. So you know that the consistency is there within the cigar itself. Okay, so that's interesting. So you're saying I should take a cigar. If I put it in the foot. Right. I can get my reading. Now, you said that this screen stays on for 10 seconds, which is the amount of time that you should give this to basically calibrate to what it is. So it's 67. The, the light. Yep. The light, the light stays on for that long, yeah. Yeah, the light stays on, sorry. And then I turned it 90 degrees, hit the button again, the light will stay on for another 10 seconds. And as soon as it mm -hmm. goes out, I know that this is staying at 67. So that is a double reading at 67. Right. Perfect. So what you did there, that, that passed through a whole other set of points of contact within that tip, that uh, rolled up tobacco. So you know you know that there's consistency. Although there's no consistency in the tobacco, the, the end of the, or the foot of the cigar, right. by doing it 90 degrees, it kind of gives you an idea how close the, the calibration is on the actual meter itself. So, and this is... Hey, Rob, just out of curiosity, can you test the cap of that cigar you just pulled out? Yeah. Um, so essentially, though, this is sending an electric current between the two probes and it's passing right. through the tobacco and it's measuring how much water is inside the tobacco leaves. Exactly, yes. Yeah. 70% right now in the cap. We got 67 on the foot and 70% in the cap. That's a that's a that's a typical difference that we see is between three to five percent. Really? Okay. Yeah, sometimes more, sometimes it's equal, just like on the one that you got sixty on both ends. So let's talk about that because obviously this end is open and my right. cap is closed. So what we're saying is that moisture is mainly going in and out of the foot of the cigar. And then right. once it reaches here, it's kind of like, it's not necessarily stuck, it's trapped a but yeah, it stays there longer. So now right. you can see a buildup of, of moisture happening at the cap of the cigar. Exactly. Yeah. Some of it is due to the roll, but the majority of it is because it's closed. And, you know, 80 to 90% of the moisture that actually gets inside the binder and filler actually wicks through the foot. Okay. Some does come through the wrapper. So... I was always taught in retail business that 
I shouldn't cut the cap and put the cigar back. Have you guys noticed that, that you shouldn't do that or that you could do that and it would be totally fine? No, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I think a lot, in a lot of circles it's considered sacrilege, but why not get it to, to the, the, the humidity to flow through there equally? You know, as long as, uh, as long as, I mean, I think just simply poking the cap allows some flow through with the humidimeter. But if you want to pre-cut it, put it back in cellophane, we, we don't see anything wrong with that at all. Interesting. I wonder why Unless you neglect it, then it'll dry out faster. <laughs> Pretty True. Much. Yeah. Well, so if you neglect it, then it could dry out faster. And I'm sure that then there's, if it's drying out faster, then there's more opportunity for the cap to unravel. So that would right. make sense. But if you are looking to try to either reduce the amount of humidity in the head or you're looking to try to bring equilibrium to both ends, you could simply cut it and leave it in your humidor for about 48 hours and it'll probably come to equilibrium. Right. I mean, uh, I mean, people can really geek out with this instrument and Sorry. we've learned a lot about it too, you know, but... I mean, we're just casual cigar smokers. We're not people that pull all these flavors out like some people do. I mean, I've been smoking for 35 years. I just, you know, right now for me, this is a great time because I think this is like the golden age of cigar smoking. When I started out, there wasn't uh, all these AJ, uh, AJ Fernandez and all these other rollers making these beautiful, you know, aged cigars, you know, that, that there were in the mid-80s and early 90s, you know, so... Uh, so yeah, I just, you know, for me, Rob, it's just knowing that, uh, I don't smoke when that's over or under humidified, which I can tell the difference, you know? So you know, just recently, I think I posted on Facebook, I ordered three, five packs of cigars from a reputable retailer, which we're not going to name names. And, uh, one of the batches came in at 75 on the foot. One of the batches came in at 55 and one of them was at 67. Wow. So right then and there. The 67 one, I could light up that night if I really wanted to. The 75, I had the dry box. In the 55, I knew it had to be put in storage for a while, you know. So sure. right, that's the greatest thing for me personally, you know. So can I ask, and I'm afraid to find out, did they ship it with Bovida? Yep, ship with Bovida. Okay. And what we found out is that Bovida is great. See, I think a lot of people think that when you ship with Bovida that your cigars automatically come in. And we don't want to put all that pressure on you, right? So the, this, this, the, the, the Bovida packs help to maintain whatever moisture is in that cigar as it ships. Absolutely. Unless it's, in, unless it's in transit for 7 or 14 days, then the Bovida might actually act on it to help it. But all the Bovida does is just help it to keep and maintain what's in that cigar. It doesn't ensure that, hey, I got my cigar with 69%. I know my cigar is 69%. No. Yeah, because you, all don't, three of those, you don't know what that cigar came into that retailer at. So if it came in at 75%, then they package it up, put the Bovida in it. Really, the Bovida is just making sure that during the transit, as the heat increases right. or decreases, it's giving moisture so that the cigar doesn't have to give up its moisture. But what you're saying right. now is as soon as you get them, it's so important to have this because then you know exactly where that cigar is going to stand and you can then right. a, you know, either dry box it or age it longer in your humidor with humidity so that it's at the perfect right. humidity when you're ready to smoke. Brilliant. I mean, you know, in, in the old days, I might have been tempted to smoke all three of those cigars, but one of the cigars at 75 might have been the flavors might have been, been too muted or it might not might have not kept a, an ember very well. And consequently, the one that was at 55 might have, you know, had some bitter taste to it. So I would have never have known. All three of them felt pretty good, although the 75 was a little bit damp. You could feel that one. But all three of them felt to me just by feeling like, okay, I guess I could smoke this up. But now with the meter, you can actually tell, you know, and that's part of our motto, you know, know right. when to hold them, know when to smoke them, you know, so. Oh, I love that. Know when to hold them, know when to smoke them. I like that because I, I do the field test as well, but with that big of a range from basically 60 to 75, if you can only feel that the 75 is just a little bit squishy, that makes it very difficult for me to know then is this really right to smoke now or do i need well, to hang on to it and bring it down yeah. in humidity well without without revealing the the patent you know i can tell you the difference in moisture content from the 75 to the 55 although those two numbers don't seem like a big 
disparity. Uh, there, the the seventy five percent cigar probably had around sixteen percent moisture in it. The fifty five had about eight. So you see, there's a difference wow. there, and that's what you're really looking at is the moisture content, not the humidity level. Although most cigar smokers can relate to humidity, but the moisture content difference in those two cigars was half. Sure. So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So I like the fact already that I'm. I can understand the foot and the head of the cigar differently, and that's okay. It's fine to have a three to five point difference in the head of the cigar versus the foot, right? So that's good. I'm safe typically, there. Typically. Now I get to play with the instrument and understand, okay, do I like my cigars at 62 like you guys? And as it builds up, I obviously increase the humidity. So. As we're smoking this, could we put the pro back in there and get a different reading now? Or is it not working? No, I wouldn't do that because, you're, because the moisture from your lips is probably going to influence the, the, the cap. And obviously, you don't want to put it in the lit end because you'll right. burn the meter. <laughs> but what you can do is I maybe on a sacrificial cigar to test that theory. Now, see behind that ember, you should feel a little squishy. Does it feel a little squishy oh, yeah. there? See, so what you could do is put the meter in there to illustrate the point of how the moisture changes. You know, I wouldn't do it on that one if it's a good cigar, but if you want to go but ahead. Would, we'll still be able to smoke it, right? Well, you'll have a cigar flute. Yeah, but, well, that's all right. So. It, I'll smoke past it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know what the reading is here. I got to see. 84% behind the amber. Right. So that kicks up quite right. a bit surprised yeah. by that so that's what you're saying yeah. where you like to smoke them more at 62 percent because then as it builds up it's going to stay lower and closer to 70 percent right. especially in the fillet of the cigar so i mean all cigars build moisture so i'd rather start a little bit lower on the foot knowing that as it builds it just comes into like the perfect range you know so that's that's interesting I like the flavor coming out of this cigar, though. It's great. I mean, I must either like yeah. my cigars a little bit more humid or I've just always been this way. I don't know. Good good flavor so far, good uh, mouthfeel. Everything is, is going the way I want it. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, um, we've talked about the foot of the cigar. If I have a cigar, I think this one, yeah, this is pretty dry. Stick it in the foot of the cigar, and let's see what our reading is. 60, oh, 59, it's not as dry as I thought it was. 59%, 58, 57. I think 57 is going to be the spot on. So really, once this, oh, 55 now. So once that light goes out, that's the number I should... Yeah, I wouldn't go past that. Okay, so 55% once the light goes out is the real reading. Yeah, that's max. That's max. I would go anywhere between five to 10 seconds. The light goes out at 10 seconds. So. Okay. So in this regard, obviously this is a long filler cigar. My question would be, okay, now I just turned it 90 degrees. It's starting out at 60. Um, and it's, I think it's going to kind of wind down here a little bit. And we talked about, or we haven't talked about it, but maybe it's that it's loose and you, and you talked about possibly needing to pinch just a little bit. You're not that. Not, I, would pinch, I would pinch the other way, so yeah, you don't. Way? Right. Correct. Like yeah. So you don't hit, um, bend, the probe. bend the probes if you pinch. Okay. This way. So we. I recommend. We doing don't want to like, pinch this way. We want to. If we're doing any pinching, we're just going to hold correct. the foot here to get a better. So you're making good contact with, with the uh, probes and the, the tobacco. Got it. Perfect. Now I do have a short filler cigar which I'm interested in understanding whether or not this is going to get a good reading. Now, I would assume we could get a reading, but because all the tobacco is cut up in here and all loose, um, who knows what's going to happen. I got 74% though. Wow, it's holding really well at 74%. 75. Are yeah. you you're currently pinching it? Yeah. Should I let go of what it? it just see what happens. Still at 74. Yeah, so you see, pinching is really not something you have to do all the time. But like I said, if it's a loosely packed cigar, that's the only time I would ever do that. 
79 percent wow does that feel damp that cigar 78 um it doesn't feel damp to me i mean obviously it's a short it's a short filler so it's not as tight as a full leaf uh cigar but right. um i've been smoking these for a few weeks now and i love them they're great garage sticks they're wonderful they, they got good flavor i wonder what's causing it to be a little bit more humid i don't know what that is i actually haven't really looked into that i'm gonna have to smoke this one later today and see what happens but it's interesting i like to uh i obviously like to use this to experiment with because i think it's it's a fun tool to use so that i know exactly what my relative humidity is inside my cigars i love it and thank you the fact that like you said if you get cigars from online or even from a retailer i love being able to use this on the cigars obviously i buy don't go sticking this inside cigars you haven't bought yet but even right. as a retailer myself, I remember getting boxes in and it would be a hot ticketed cigar and they would, right. the customers would really want to smoke it. And I would say, you need to give the cigar time. It just came in from UPS. It's cold. It's middle of December. It's going to blow up if you light it up because temperature is cool on it. Relative humidity might be off. I haven't acclimated inside my humidor. I would have loved to have had this tool back then because I could have put it in the foot, known where it's at, and then decided, am I going to put this on the shelf or not yet? <coughs> that was the whole Excuse point. Me. That was the whole point of the meter. We didn't want to just make it for people that can afford, a, you know, a piece of expensive instrumentation, but for people that, you know, uh, that smoke cigars every day because just then it's the cost of saving three cigars and not only the three bad cigars you might smoke but three hours of your life you know so absolutely it, the, the problem is it does get discounted sometimes because it's only thirty dollars rob but i tell people when you see the three thousand dollar meter and i look at it there's not three thousand dollars worth of componentry in that meter it's the time that it took the guy developing the meter to, to come up with the calibration because those test meters are only made 10 at a time or five at a time. We, through, because of economies of scale, we make thousands of these. So my time is widely dispersed over all these meters. So, you know, sure. that's why we put, it, we put it up, we put it up there because of the time that went into it. But it's, it, we, you know, we, we hear the word gimmick once in a while, but we don't like that word, but you know, it pops up. I'm sure it happened with Bovida when two guys first came out too. You know, Absolutely. I mean, it just, you know, so, uh, so that's what really drove us to come up with this project. You know, so and we're happy. We've been hearing Johnny can tell you uh, the, the reception we've had with this thing. I mean, people calling it game changer and great product, and I mean, I don't know what else they've been saying about it. But God, you can allude. Yeah, it. I get. It. Actually, Rob, you sent me uh, one of your customers on Instagram. They messaged you, and you forwarded the message to me. I don't remember where he's from, but I know he's an inter international uh, customer. And we've been getting messages from all over the world. Um, basically, unfortunately, right now with COVID, we're having a difficult time, you know, shipping. Hopefully, that'll change soon. But the uh, majority of our customers, they love it. And when they realize that it's going to eventually pay for itself, and the fact that it's saving them from smoking a bad cigar, as you guys just talked about. Um, yeah, the, the feedback's been great. And that's thanks to all the customers that have been purchasing it and giving it a shot and using it on a daily basis. Absolutely. We got a question over here from, I think, Riley. If my cigar is set at 64% relative humidity, sitting in a perfect RH, how long does it take to get back to 69%? It's a truly it depends type of question because it depends on the container, right? And if you're using Bovida, I would tell you if you're at 64% and you're in an airtight container like the Bovida humidor bag with a 69%, it could take anywhere from four to six weeks. Um, I would also tell you um, to take the cellophane off if you want it to come up quicker because the cellophane is going to slow down the moisture transfer by about seven times. So if you take the cellophane off, you're reducing a moisture barrier, and then you can get moisture into that cigar better. 
And the other thing you could do is, you know, cut the cap and see if that will help distribute moisture throughout the entire cigar quicker. Um, but again, it's not bad to smoke them at 64%. Give it a try. You no. might actually like it better. So it's right. not to say that it needs to come up to 69% because once you light that cigar, that humidity is going to build and build and build. So you don't want right. to overbuild it so that the flavors are muted. But, you, you know, you kind of just, again, this is the cigar geek's best friend because now you get to play with the, your cigars and say, man, I really like that cigar when I smoke it at 62%. Man, I really like that cigar when I smoke it at 64%. You know, mm -hmm. this is entirely, it's personal preference. Um, but yes, you can actually measure it and find out when it comes up. Now, I do want to touch on Candela because on your guys' website, you say Candela, because of its fermentation process, it is totally different. This is a Jake Wyatt... Um, lucid interval um this has got a candela wrapper but the entire filler i don't believe is candela so i'm going to test it out um but why is it that candela wouldn't read the same lou and john because a candela candela is not fermented tobacco it's just cured and let's talk about that a little bit it's cured tobacco for about what 30 to 60 days roughly in a barn so it never well, really... Well, I'm, I'm not sure about the time, the, the period of time that they do it, but fermented, it goes through a whole different process uh, with the tobacco. Right. Obviously, it breaks down with the sugars. So a, a fermented tobacco holds moisture a little differently because it's based on weight. So it's based on how much the tobacco weighs wet versus what it weighs dry. And then because a fermented leaf is a little bit different than a candela leaf, it's not a lot different, but typically... You don't find uh, candelas in in, in uh, binders and fillers. Usually, you see them on a wrapper. So, sure. it, from that aspect, it shouldn't really make a difference. Yeah, this one was sitting pretty right at sixty-seven, sixty-six. So, right, this one right. for me would be ready to smoke. Jake Wyatt, shout out to yeah. those guys. Great cigar, beautiful. Uh, if you can see the cap on that, look oh, at wow, the cap. that. Wow, that's gorgeous. Isn't that interesting how they do that and just. The, the architecture on it is just amazing. Yeah, it's truly artisan there, yeah. So that's good to know. So if you have a completely candela cigar in the inside, you're going to get a different reading, obviously, because the moisture that it holds is totally different than fermented tobacco. So that's good to know. But right. if you just have a candela wrapper, which Jake Wyatt, uh, Roma Craft, a lot of uh, other uh, Fuente, they all make some sort of candela, and you can easily use the moisture meter for that, or the humidity, humi humimeter. I said it right, right? Humimeter. <laughs> humidimeter. Humidimeter. I'm like, I'm go. calling this the humidity meter, the humidamana, the <laughs> homana. I'm calling it everything. I did, I did name it, so you have to blame Tom and John for that one. So, <laughs> but you know, can I expand on the cellophane? Because it's a. I like, like the name. It's a question that you see like come up often. Now you brought up the cellophane X as a barrier, which it does. You know. Yeah. You're totally right about that. But uh, the flip side to that is that if you have a properly humidified cigar, the, the cigar, if neglected, stays longer, better in the cellophane because it actually acts as a barrier and it protects it. Yeah, it goes both ways, right? And don't be afraid you could pull right through, right through, uh, right through the cellophane oh, as well. You don't have to remove it. Yeah, we didn't show that. I got a different cigar, but we could easily do that with another Jake Wyatt cigar here. If we really wanted to know, hey, I don't want to take this out of the cellophane, but I want to know if it's ready to smoke. We can easily poke through the cap. Oops, that had a double. There we go. And we're easily reading right off to the races. 73% right now. Yeah. So, I mean, this cigar, essentially, I could take out, as long as it's not too dry in my area, and put it in my pocket. I'd be good to go if I went to the golf course or a restaurant or whatever, right. uh, and, and I'd be good to go. But for me, I usually don't just carry one cigar when I'm golfing. I carry multiple, so I just grab my Boveda humidor bag, and I'm good <laughs> to go. Do, and as do we. Yeah, right. You always have to have a cigar or two to share. You know, it's just one of those things. Like, there's always going to be somebody that comes up to you and says, you always have that one friend that never has a cigar well, on Well, that's phone. one thing. So you got the one friend that never, oh, man, I forgot my cigars. Okay, great. Here you go. I have a cigar. But then there's always that, 
random walk by that goes, man, that cigar smells really good. And it, the, my favorite mm. thing to do is just offer him a cigar, right? You know, if, if yeah. you came up to me and said, man, that smells really good, I'd love to have one. Or just even the fact that you said that it smells really good. My first question is, would you like to have one? Because that's what cigars are for me. Sharing, sharing the enjoyment of having a cigar is by far one of the best and most exciting things to do as a cigar smoker. Absolutely. I mean, it's a great community um, for me personally because I have a business. It's a, it's a one or two hour escape for me every day when I come home. I call it yoga for cigar smokers. You know, it's just exactly. like I don't do anything but when I get home. I sit in my backyard and just smoke a cigar and enjoy the sounds of the trees and the you know, and nature. So, you know, it's great. Well, I got a, a cigar recently in, and I wanted to see what this one is reading at. On the foot here, got 65%, 64, so yeah, this is perfect. It's ready to go, and I'm ready to smoke this. Absolutely, one of the best tools I've used. I think somebody said it in the comments, and I apologize, I didn't get your name, it went by. But this thing at $30 could actually save you money because you're not smoking a cigar that you know is either too humid or too dry. And once you burn this $10 stick and it's not right at the right humidity, you've wasted $10 and you don't know what you're doing because now you're like, I didn't like it, but it was at the wrong humidity. So maybe you do like it and you would have bought more. So, well, well for look me. at look at how much time and effort goes into making a cigar. They say 300 hands touch it. I mean, these rollers go through painstaking steps to make these things to be smoked at a certain level. And sometimes I think that if we don't know where they're at, we're kind of doing ourselves a disservice and the guy who blended it because you'll have a bad experience. You might talk bad about it. And again, you just wasted an hour of your day smoking something you didn't enjoy, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, no, for me, this is not only a money saver, but it's a fun tool to use. It hones my craft of understanding where I like to smoke my cigars. I absolutely love it. Um, I did want to touch on a cool tip that I picked up from your guys' website. Because we're, we're sticking these metal probes into oily cigars, you had talked about taking a, an, uh, what is this called, an alcohol pad? So just a standard alcohol rub pad. And what I could do is I could clean the, the probes of any oils or gunk that are, that's on them. And I, I should be able to get a better reading if I'm having troubles or if I have kind of buildup on my probes. Right? If you put too much alcohol, you might have to allow the alcohol to dry up a little bit. But you don't even have to use alcohol, just a, a rag or something, Rob, sometimes, Rob. And, and by cleaning it, guys think they're going to visibly see tar or something on there. The oils are invisible, so you can't right. see them, you know. Yeah, so no, you're, just, you can't see the buildup, but obviously right. it could be there. So it's nice to just clean it and keep it in check. How often do you think that they should clean these? Depends upon how often uh, they use it, huh? Yeah, I would say maybe every 10 pokes or something like that. That's typically what I do. Sometimes I forget. There was a period of about a month that I forgot to clean it, man. And I could see they were checking low. And when I did it, it was a five-point difference just by check by cleaning it. So. Well, that's interesting. A good tip and trick. If you're, if you're experiencing reduced relative humidity readings, clean your probe. Uh, clean the metal probes on the end of it, um, these guys here, and make sure you're getting the right reading because it's easily the oils are stuck on this probe and not giving you right. an accurate reading. Cool. Every 10 pokes clean. Uh, well, beer. that's what, that's what I do. You want to do it more often with just a simple rag. You don't have to use an alcohol wipe. Um, however often you think it's necessary, it doesn't affect the reading that badly, but it can change it four to five points for sure. So sure. What about troubleshooting? We talked a little bit about being able to obviously pinch the base. We're not gonna pinch the probes, but we're gonna pinch the other way to get a better reading. We can switch to the cap to get a different reading or possibly the same or get a more accurate reading. What other tips and tricks do you have while using the meter? I don't know, you have any other tips or tricks? That's like <clears throat> making sure you clean the probes. If it, if it drops significantly, 
try pinching. Um, basically, test both the foot and the cap. Uh, I think there was a question on there regarding which one should I use, the foot or the cap. I mean, I recommend doing both. If you get if you get a super low reading at the foot, test the cap to see what the difference might be, and then you'll get a better idea if you want it to send your humidor uh, a little bit longer or less. Um, sometimes if you hold it at like, if you, if you hold it on an angle, the weight of its, of the cigar itself would okay. ensure a little bit better contact as well. That's a great, that's a great point. Sometimes okay. I actually allow the, the meter itself. Sometimes I just allow the meter itself cause it's got more weight to give, to give you the reading or I just let the cigar sit out like a plank. And that helps to make better contact on the cigar. The weight of the cigar will put enough force on the probes that it'll, it'll give you a better reading. Got it. So we could just stick it in there and hang on to the right. cigar and let yeah. that do the weight. Perfect. Like I said, a rule of thumb a rule of thumb for me is if I put it in a cigar and the cigar actually holds the meter, typically you don't have to squeeze it because it's got enough grip on it by itself. You know, okay. That's how I use it. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. That makes sense. Perfect. Cool. Well, did I miss anything? Any other tips or tricks? Obviously, if you have them and you've been using this, throw them down in the comments. Help us all out on the on the uh, YouTube live that we got going on here. Um, Lou, John, did I miss anything about the the humidity meter? Sorry. Did I say it right? Humidity meter. Humidimeter. Humidimeter. Perfect. <laughs> Did we miss anything? Is there anything else we want to cover? Yeah, well, one of the things that we would like to broach is that sometimes people say that it's it's unnecessary. They feel it's unnecessary. But, you know, like everything in life, whenever there's a need for something, you know, like, you know, people use meat thermometers to check their meat when they're cooking on, or on a smoker, you know, to check their slabs of meat. I mean, and this is something that people have been using for decades they check a uh, use a tire pressure gauge and they're checking their tire pressure now we can all trust the display that's in our newer cars but the older cars didn't have it but still i don't trust the display that's in a car and i don't push on my sidewalls to see how deflated or inflated i actually check the pressure with something like this and that's that's what basically prompted me to uh look into the humidimeter for cigars i figured why not it it People have been smoking cigars for decades, Rob, and you know before this meter came along, and they enjoyed cigars up until that point. This is just another tool, a low-cost tool, to help them not smoke an over or hum under humidified cigar. Now that said, it doesn't fix a bad roll. So if you right. got a bad, you got a plug cigar, it's not going to do that. But all it does is just help them to figure out the the you know the for, like I said mail order. And uh, for finding your sweet spot, and for a lot of cigar smokers that have these taller uh, humidors, it's good to help with rotation. Rotation. People have come up to and said this has been great for us because humidity doesn't is not the same at the top as it is at the bottom, so it helps us to rotate cigars in our humidor. You know, so yeah, those big I don't personally have that problem because I don't I don't have that many cigars, but some guys do. You know, absolutely. Those big cabinets, they got a lot of fans and circulation, and yeah, absolutely. One thing that we didn't touch on was the actual, the standard. You call this the calibration standard. I think this is very interesting. So since the probe is using electronic wavelengths or, or reading the electronic just, wavelengths in between the probe, correct? It's just electricity. It's just, uh, just checking resistance between a positive and a negative. So ultimately, if we use this to calibrate the meter we should be getting it right at 70 percent right around 70 percent 69 70 71 you know the meter is working properly then i got 70 percent on mine perfect okay. so that's great this is a handy tool to just make sure it's on uh on point essentially with the reading i like that Very i'm simple. glad you brought that up because because uh the meter itself, because we try to bring it as a low-cost unit, is not calibratable, nor does it really have to be. Unlike a hygrometer, 
which does have to be calibrated because of the nature of how a hygrometer works and how sensitive it is. These are not as sensitive uh, because of how they operate, so you don't really need to calibrate it. Um, so this is the standard is just an, another unit to give people peace of mind so that when they're using their meter, they can know that it's working properly. So that's, that's about it. So. so a couple of questions have come up of where can we buy this? In the United States, you can go to your website, correct? Correct. What's the website URL that we need to go to? Uh, cigarmedics.com. Got it. Cigar Medics, and that's M-E-D-I-C-S, Cigar Medics. All one word, no dashes. Perfect. So CigarMedics.com to buy this. Can you get it on Amazon? We do have a tab on our website, on the, our, or a thumbnail on the top right corner. Um, we have, you know, if someone has an eBay account, they could click that uh, and use their eBay account to purchase it. Um, Amazon as well. And uh, also we've been using Etsy for international sales. Um, most of the... Some of the countries are not open yet, but if somebody would shoot me, you know, a direct message through Instagram, um, we'll look into it. We'll check in with the post office to see if there's been any changes. And if we don't think there's going to be any issues delivering and the customer is willing to wait a little bit longer than usual due to, you know, the COVID situation, um, we'll open that up for them as well. So over in the UK, the best way to order this is through Etsy. Correct. Correct. You don't have any distributors right now in the UK, right? Serving uh, that area. We do. We do. Don't we? We have distributors of this product in other countries in Europe. I think France is one. Spain is another. France, Spain, Dubai, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Okay. Canada. So yeah, if we wanted to know where to get connected with the distributor for across the pond. Uh, go ahead and reach out to you guys on Instagram, and your Instagram handle is cigar at cigar medics. Cigar medics. So at cigar medics, they'll tell you where to get this from a local distributor if you need to. There's also brick and mortars that are popping up all over the nation that are buying these and selling these at their brick and mortar retail locations. So it's always good to call them and say, hey, I want to buy one of these from you. And if they don't have it, they can call them up and obviously place an order and make a sale. That's my favorite kind of yeah. cigar shop. And uh, we're going to implement, I'm in, I'm in the works of talking with um, my buddy who's been helping us out with our website. Um, we're going to make a page that will list any domestic supplier that has bought the humidimeter as well as international. Okay. So that way you could just go on the website and you'll be able to check, you know, if you... Um, if you don't want to buy on the website or if you're an international buyer, it'll tell you exactly who will have it. So there's another question that's really good, technical question, Lanceros. Lanceros are very skinny cigars. I particularly have one here, the Intemperance by Roma Craft. This is a pretty skinny cigar compared to obviously the one that I just probed. You can see the big difference here. Now, the question is, can you just probe one, use one probe and get a measure? I would assume not, not because it's measuring the current through the two probes. So what you really need to do is just make sure that you center it and stick it in. This Lancero fits. And this is right. very uh, small ring gauge. I would say this is no bigger than a 38. I don't know much Lanceros right. that are anywhere bigger or, or sorry, smaller than that. So... That's a great question. I'm a big Lancero smoker. This is a 34 ring. Okay. So, number one, I would not poke through the cellophane into the Lancero because it's kind of subject to gauging where the cigar sits. I would take it out of the out of the wrapper or out of the cellophane. So sometimes what I do, Rob, you know, I actually squeeze the foot slightly to make it oblong or egg shaped. Oh, sure. You, you could widen it by doing that. Okay. You that can makes widen sense. it, and I just poke through that way. And that's a good way of checking it as well. You just got to be really careful when dealing with uh, Lanceros. It can be done. It's just. Yeah, this is great. working for me. It's great. Coming in at 66%. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Wonderful. So Lanceros. It was designed. It was designed. 
It was designed for Lanceros as well, but I could see where people might, if they're not accurate, they might poke through the wrapper when they're trying to check it. So Sure. And we were talking possibly of coming up with an attachment that has the probes a little bit closer together to make it, um, you know, a little easier, but right. it's in, in talks. Perfect. We've got another question here. Um, Rylan again says, I have Connecticut's and Maduro's in my humidor, so I keep the cellophane on. Without cellophane, won't the different oils change the flavor? So he's really talking about the cigar rubbing up against another cigar and exchanging oils from the wrapper. And that's totally a possibility, right? I mean, you start putting oils on the other cigar and it might change the flavor. I don't know the scientific question of that, right? Because it's a percentage, right? If the cigar has 100% oils in it and you only transferred 1%, is that really going to disrupt your uh, flavor profile? I highly doubt it. But at the end of the day, do you. Do what you like to do. Keep the cellophane on if you want to. Make sure that those cigars are staying uh, isolated. And again, you know, there's some other cool information out there about cellophane being on cigars. It keeps the flavors more intact. It doesn't age as quickly. And so if the cigar was super peppery, it's going to stay super peppery longer with the cellophane on. So that's my advice, my two cents, what I know. How about I, you? I agree. I concur. Perfect. So. Good. Well, I think that wraps it up. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Unboxed. John, Lou, I really appreciate you guys being on this call. I really Thanks appreciate for having us, you Rob. making this cool device for all of us cigar enthusiasts to use. I'm super happy that I was able to test it out. Thank you so much. Well. Ah, Boveda, absolutely. Well, you know what, as a, as a long-time cigar smoker, when I was first introduced to these things, I was a little leery because I was always used to pouring water into a vessel and seeing it evaporate and refilling it. So when somebody handed me one of these, I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, But this packet, as insanely simple as it is, is just genius. You know, And I can't push it enough with, for people it, because the two-way action is just is a game changer for me. You know, it, it's just something that gives me peace of mind, you know, and I just, I can't, I can't thank the makers of Bovida enough for coming up with this product. So, you know. Thank you very much. We are humbled. We love the fact that it's just, again, all these tools, Bovida, the, this meter, everything is to help you guys smoke more cigars, uh, how you like them, where you like them, whenever you want them, just make your life easier. It's hard enough to, uh, Find the time to actually just sit down and smoke a cigar. Last thing you want to do is disrupt that by having an under-humidified cigar, over-humidified. Make our lives easier. That's what we're in the game for. Thank you again. John, Lou, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for making a great product that we can all enjoy better cigars with. Thank you, Rob. Thank Thanks, you, Rob. Thank you very much. Everyone have a good weekend. And again, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Understand that if you subscribe, you're going to get the, the bell. And obviously, we're doing this every Friday as much as we can at noon Central Standard Time. Thank you all for joining. Have a great weekend.